Welcome back everyone, my name is Joel Feld and today I want to discuss iCloud on not your Mac, but a Windows computer. I know, bear with me, I'm typically all about Apple stuff, but you know, hey, everything intertwines nowadays and iCloud is also important on the Windows computer too. So here we go. This would be important for those users of an iPhone or an iPad that want to utilize a cloud service like iCloud and take advantage of iCloud Drive or your photos so that they can wirelessly synchronize to your Windows computer and show up there without you having to plug in your device in any of that. In order for us to do that, we have to go through the setup process first to get some software, sign in with our credentials, and then choose the preferences and settings that we want. So. Let's dive in. We need to go out to the internet, and if you do a search for iCloud for Windows, you can go ahead and choose any of these links. It'll probably get you to the place you need to go, but the one that I use is the download iCloud for Windows, and I will link these down in the description below so you can go straight to them. It gives us really two choices. They really want you to download and install from the Microsoft Store, but there is another option where you can install if you're on Windows 7 or Windows 8, and you can use this direct link. Also, if you click the learn about all the different features. It's just gonna go through and show you how iCloud works with your Windows computer, talking to your iPhone and your iPad. So for example, here photos, when you take a picture on your iPhone, by having iCloud Windows set up on your computer, that photograph will automatically go to your Windows computer without you having to do anything. Same thing with files that you may use in your iCloud drive and some of these other options that you see here. We're gonna go ahead and click this link here for download iCloud for Windows. It's just gonna bring us back a step. Now, another thing that you should know if you choose to install this older version and you're on Windows 10, you're not gonna see the new features that iCloud has to offer like the passwords. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna try installing this older version because it doesn't give you all of the options of what you will see with the new version from the Microsoft Store. So even though it may work, it's not gonna be the latest and greatest. So when I click on this, it's going to download that file for us and it's going to put it in the downloads folder. So I'm gonna navigate, we can minimize this I'm going to choose the file explorer. We're going to go to our downloads and I'm going to open up this iCloud setup. Accept, install, yes I do. All right, iCloud for Windows has been installed on your computer. So I'm going to go ahead and finish and you must restart your system for the configuration changes made to iCloud to take effect. All right, well, I'm going to, I guess, restart the computer now, because that's fun, so be right back. The computer is now rebooted, and now we should have a new iCloud application within our programs. So I'm gonna go to the Start menu, and I'm gonna scroll down. Actually, recently added, it actually shows it right at the top here. But if I scroll down, we should have iCloud, it shows new, and it has all of the different items that it shows here for iCloud. Calendar, contacts, find my iPhone, iCloud itself. Now the biggest thing is the calendar, contacts, find my iPhone, keynote, mail, notes, all of this, all it does is open up a web browser and take you to iCloud.com to sign in and access that information. It's not an actual app on this computer, but what is an app is iCloud, and it prompts us to sign in. So I'll type in my Apple ID, type in my password, choose sign in. Wants to know if you want to send diagnostic information. It's up to you, I'll say send. But notice here, it's only iCloud Drive photos and bookmarks. It doesn't have some of the other features that it does with the new version of iCloud for passwords. And if we go to options, it's got a lot more options in here for photos, which they actually stripped all of that out. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose done. If I click apply in the bottom right, it's still gonna have access for the photos in iCloud Drive. So if I close out of this, go to the start menu, go to iCloud Photos, it brings us to iCloud Photos here, and it has downloads and uploads. It may take a moment for it to catch up and synchronize the pictures, but if I go to iCloud Drive, it's the same exact file structure that we have on my phone and on my Mac. So just know that if you are downloading 
It's definitely do the Microsoft Store if you're on Windows 10. If you do the other one and you're missing some of those features, you may wanna uninstall iCloud and then reinstall the other one. So we are going to do download iCloud for Windows from the Microsoft Store. So when I click on that, it's gonna bring us to their page here. We can see that this is what the app is gonna look like. So we are going to choose Git in Store App. And I guess you could go directly to the Microsoft Store also. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose Git. Scroll down, make this a little bit larger and choose install, starting to download, downloading iCloud. And I do believe, yeah, I'm signed in with a Microsoft account. So you may need a Microsoft account if you don't have one already in order to download it. I don't know, I really don't use Windows computers that often. Installing iCloud completed. This product is installed. Okay, I'm gonna choose launch here. I'm sure something's happening. Maybe we'll launch again. Maybe it's behind this window. Let's close out some of this. Let's get rid of the web browser. Okay, not behind there. Let's check our start menu. Ah, iCloud. Okay, so we have iCloud, iCloud passwords, and iCloud shared albums. So we are going to go and open up iCloud. We can get rid of the store here. All right, let's close out of the store. I don't know what that window is all about, but you should get this window <laughs> and maybe a white blank window. I have no idea, but this one is the one that we need. What it asks you here after you open up iCloud is you need your Apple ID and your Apple ID is just your email address that you use on all of your devices. It's how to synchronize and make your iPhone, your iPad, your Windows computer, your Mac all on the same page so that when you take a photograph on one device, it goes to all of them because they're all signed in using the same Apple ID. I'm gonna go ahead and type in my Apple ID, learn with Joel at iCloud.com. Type in my password here and then choose sign in. Now a few things when that happens is it automatically is gonna prompt for a verification code for the two-factor authentication for security reasons. If I look over here on my Mac that I'm signed in with the same Apple ID, notice it says, hey, your Apple ID is being used in this particular area. Do you want to allow or don't allow? And same thing with my phone here, it's going to pop up a message saying Apple ID is requested. It shows the Apple ID and it says, do you want to allow or not allow? This would also show up on any other device that I'm logged in, an iPad, another phone, whatever it may be. So I need to either on my Mac or on my phone, choose allow here so I can type and it's gonna show me a code. So I'll do it on my phone here. I'm gonna choose allow. And it says, okay, here's the code. Notice on my computer, that code went away because it knew that I accepted it from my iPhone here. So it wants me to enter this 244003, which this number changes all the time. It's always a new number. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in 244003. So now that authenticated in, and so here is iCloud on the Windows. Now this is where you go to configure what information you want to synchronize amongst all of your devices using iCloud. So at the top here, it says you can access mail, contacts, calendars, reminders at iCloud.com. This is just linking us directly to the website, just like Gmail, Yahoo, MSN, whatever email address that you use for your email, you can always go out to that website to access the same exact thing. So if I went to this iCloud.com here and did learn with Joel at iCloud, Dot com put in my password two-factor authentication again this time I'll accept from my computer notice it says Apple ID is being used to sign in I will say allow and then it gives me this code 751923 and then it prompts me do you want to trust this browser so that it doesn't ask us the verification code the next time and yes I will say trust because this is my computer and here I'm at where it has the mail, contacts, calendars, like that display message said. It also has access to all of your photos, iCloud Drive, notes, reminders, and some of the additional tools that Apple comes with. I'm gonna go ahead and just minimize this for the moment, and we're gonna come back to the main iCloud integration. We can go ahead and even dismiss that banner at the top. We're left with the remaining options, iCloud Drive, photos, bookmarks, and passwords. iCloud Drive is just a storage facility. It's very similar to Google Drive, or Microsoft OneDrive or Dropbox. It's just a location where you can store files on the cloud, which keep in mind, the cloud is, it's really just someone else's computer. It's just Apple's giant 
farm of computers or warehouses of computers that are storing this information that we're just accessing. So anytime you hear a cloud storage facility, it's not like this magical place in the sky. It's someone else's computer that is storing our files that shoot it up to the internet so that we can have access to it on all of our other devices for convenience. So that's that's kind of the cloud. It's, it's just a computer that could be halfway around the world. I don't know. So iCloud Drive is primarily used for storage though. PDF documents, you could put videos in there, you can put really almost anything. I actually have another video on iCloud Drive specifically. It's really focused on Macs and iPhones and iPads that I will link down below. But for this purpose, it's really just you're storing files and folders. The next option is photos and it has this options button on the right. So if we click this, it gives us two choices, either iCloud photos and shared albums. iCloud photos are going to be any photograph that you take with your iPhone. It's gonna automatically go up to iCloud and then shoot that photograph down to any device that you're signed in with iCloud and have the box checked here. So we're gonna see how, how all of this works in just a moment. For now, we're gonna leave these checked so that they synchronize. So I'm gonna choose done. The next one is bookmarks. So I'm gonna choose options here and it integrates with Internet Explorer, Firefox and Chrome. I don't even know why they have an Internet Explorer anymore because that's pretty much obsolete nowadays. I don't even know if it's installed on this computer. So you could choose Chrome and I could say okay. It does need an additional extension. So when you launch Chrome, it'll probably prompt you for that. So let's actually look at that. So if you open up Chrome and go to Web Store, you can type in iCloud and you will have the two extensions that it prompts you. So I'm gonna actually do iCloud bookmarks and I can say add to Chrome, add this extension, and then it would synchronize those bookmarks. So now I have my iCloud, literally all the bookmarks that are on my Mac as well as my phone and my iPad. So it synchronizes all of those at the top. So I'm gonna close this out. Same thing with the next option is passwords to install a Chrome in extension or an edge extension and this synchronizes all of the passwords that you may be syncing in your keychain really convenient so you can do the same thing here we could do install extension and iCloud passwords extension is for edge is required so we could choose download it's going to add that we get it and same thing, add the extension and the passwords would have access to the web browser here. I'm not gonna go too far in depth with the passwords as that could be a whole nother video in itself. This is just focusing on getting you signed in with the software and a brief overview of the different options. So after passwords here, it gives us an option, a visual graph of the storage that we have with our cloud storage. So I'm on the 200 gigabyte plan. I have 113 gigabytes free. I can see if I hover over on top of these, it shows me what is actually taking up the space. So I have 60 gigs worth of photos and videos, five gigs of backups and so on and so forth. If I click storage here, it's just gonna break that information down even farther and I could see exactly what I have. So for example, if I click on iCloud photos, it says I have 5,400 photos, 17 videos stored in iCloud. In the top right, you can always choose to ch change storage plan if I want more and I can upgrade to the two terabyte plan or I can downgrade options and go to a lower one that it will show me. But if you wanna know about iCloud pricing, I have yet another video about buying iCloud storage if you wanna know how that works. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose cancel for that and then done. And once I've done all of this, I can choose apply and now it's told the computer that I wanna synchronize all of this content. That's pretty much all of the options that you have. Over here on the left-hand side, you can choose to sign out. If you do this, it's going to give you the option to turn off iCloud altogether and delete anything that's been downloaded, like your photographs or your bookmarks, things like that. So we don't wanna do this. I'm gonna go ahead and choose cancel. The one above this is account details. If I click on this, this just gives me a link to tell me what account I'm signed in with and I can and choose to share iCloud analytics to developers to improve the product if you like to do that type of thing but I'm gonna go ahead and choose okay and just close this window. So that iCloud app, that's just really for the settings. Check in those boxes. Do you want this information to synchronize or do you not? So if we go back to the start menu here, we can scroll down and it looks like it'll have the recently added at the top, but I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down and we have iCloud, iCloud passwords and iCloud shared albums. 
If I click on iCloud passwords, it gives me the option says iCloud passwords is locked. We sign in. I type in my pin on the computer and now it gives me all of my different uh, accounts here on the left hand side with the username and password. So nice little password manager built into iCloud and you have access to it directly right here. You make a change here, it'll automatically go to your phone and vice versa. I'm gonna go ahead and X out of this in the top right. Let's go back to the start menu. We're gonna scroll down and take a look at shared albums. And this just brings up a nice little app. With iCloud shared albums, it gives you the ability to take a bunch of photographs, put them in a nice viewing online gallery and share it with anyone, anywhere that has access to the internet. It doesn't matter if you have an iCloud account, it doesn't matter if you have an iPhone, they could have an Android or a Windows computer, halfway around the world, it doesn't matter iCloud shared albums give you the ability just to share photos and videos with people, friends, family, whoever you might want. I have two shared albums currently under my Learn with Joel, this North Shore Lutzen and some family pictures here. If I double click on the North Shore, this just scrolls down and I can go through all of the videos and photographs that we took while hiking the North Shore up in Minnesota which if you've never been, it's ridiculously cold. I think this particular day, it was probably like 30 below, but we did get some great photographs of the waves crashing against the rocks and we did some snowshoeing and I took my drone. It was a lot of fun. Needless to say, this gives me the ability to share this collection of photographs with anyone that I want. So I'm gonna go back to my shared albums in the top and this is just where it shows them. Now let's go ahead and X out of here. And the next two items, we have iCloud Drive and Photos. Now this is all dealing with files and folders that are in the File Explorer. So what we wanna to do to see how this works is we'll close out of this. We're gonna open up the File Explorer down here and we are going to first go to Pictures. And if I go to Pictures folder, there is a category called iCloud Photos. Double click on iCloud Photos, it's gonna have just photos and the shared, same thing we looked at before. If I double click on Photos, here are all of the photographs that are in my phone and my iPad. So let's take a look and see how this works. If I go on my phone here, all of these photographs here are identical to what I will see on my phone. The beauty of this is it synchronizes. So if I take a photograph here, it's gonna automatically show up on this computer. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna go to the camera and I'm actually, let's take a picture of this, the new MacBook Air with the M2 processor. Although the fingerprints, not a fan, but this computer is amazing. All right, so I take a photograph here. Let's exit back to photographs and notice that photograph showed right in the photos. And if we organize this by date and we can change this to date around, we're gonna wait a minute for this photograph to appear. Now notice on the phone here, it still says syncing one item to iCloud. So we have to wait for that that photograph here to be pushed up to iCloud so then it can say, hey, uh, yeah, I see you have an, a Mac over here, a Windows computer over here, an iPad over here. So I need to, sh to shoot that photograph down to all of those other devices that are signed in. So we're gonna wait for this to synchronize and then we're gonna come back and look for that photograph. Now in the meantime, the other option is iCloud Drive. Now iCloud Drive is more about the file structure of just organizing files and folders. They could be pictures, videos, PDFs, Word documents, Excel spreadsheets. You can put a lot of different types of files in here. For example, let's go ahead and let's search, or let's just search dog here. And we're gonna grab an image and I'll show you how this works. Let's get this guy. We're just gonna drag this photograph to the desktop and we'll close out of Edge. If we double click on this, here is this photograph, rename it. So I'm gonna select it and just say dog photo to sync. So now that we've taken this photograph on this computer from the internet, I'm just gonna drag this into the iCloud drive and it's going to synchronize up. And if we go back to my phone here, if I touch files on the, on the phone, touch browse in the top left, go to iCloud drive, Notice, here is that photograph. It's already on my phone. I didn't have to plug my phone into this computer to copy it, it's just automatically there. So that's the convenience of syncing. It gives you the ability to move files and folders from point A to point B wirelessly, and it's just really, really convenient. 
Now, if I open up this photograph on my phone here and I deleted it, what do you think is gonna happen? So let's, I'm gonna touch the little dots up here. We're gonna choose select, select this photograph, and we're gonna choose the trash can. Now notice on the computer here, it just went away. So the whole concept of syncing is it's keeping your devices on the same page. It's combining all of your devices so that they all keep the same information, not additional information. If I delete it on one place, it's gonna delete it someplace else. All right, so let's go back and check on that photograph. If we go back to iCloud Photos here and we organize by date, double click on this top one, and here is that photograph of the keyboard. And the same thing would happen if I deleted it here from the computer, it's gonna delete off my phone and vice versa. So let's actually go to my Mac and see how that works. If I open up Photos, I can see that in the bottom right here, here is that photograph. So let's close this out of the windows and see if it deletes here. In photos, I'm just gonna go ahead and press delete on the keyboard. It prompts me, delete from all your devices. This photo will be deleted from iCloud Photos on all of your devices, so everywhere. This Windows computer, my iPhone, iPad, everywhere else. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose delete. It deletes it and once Oh, it's already gone from the Windows computer. So that's the whole concept of syncing. iCloud synchronizes and just keeps the information the same all of your places. If we go back to iCloud here, back to the main application, if I were to uncheck these boxes, it's going to remove that content from just this computer, not everywhere else, just this computer. So let's say that I'm getting rid of this Windows computer because I would. I, I'm sorry, Windows, I just, I really, not a fan, but hey, some people are and that's cool. Just not my cup of tea. But if I wanted to get rid of, or if I were selling this computer or I didn't use it anymore, I'd wanna for sure make sure that I signed out and got rid of everything. So I can do one of two things. If you wanna completely disassociate this Windows computer with your iCloud account, you would choose sign out and then it's going to give you the prompt to delete everything from this PC. Now, if I only wanted to pick and choose, if I didn't want photos, for example, I could just uncheck this box and choose apply in the bottom right, and it's gonna give us the same prompt. Do you wanna turn off photos and all photos and videos stored in iCloud will be deleted from this PC? They will still be on my phone, they'll still be on my Mac, they'll still be in iCloud.com, they will just not be here on this computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose cancel, and really I'm just gonna go ahead and choose sign out. Now, actually before we do that, uh, because you're on a Windows computer, we talked a little bit about iCloud.com itself. So if we go back out to the web browser here and just did iCloud.com, if I sign in, do learn with Joel at iCloud.com, type in my password there. And if we go to photos here, notice it's gonna be the same exact photos. Notice there's no keyboard picture here. It's actually in the recently deleted. So if I click on this, here is the keyboard. Now if I select this and choose recover in the top right, it's gonna take that photograph out of the trash, put it back into the main library where all of the other photographs are at. So if I click on library here, here it's back. And if I minimize this and we minimize this window, notice back in iCloud Photos, that photograph is back. How awesome is that? And if I go to my Mac here, notice in the bottom right, it just automatically popped up. So that is a quick little demo of iCloud on the Windows and how photos synchronize. So I'm just gonna end with it by Xing out of all of this. We're going to go to iCloud and we're gonna choose sign out in the bottom left. We're gonna say delete from PC. Yes, we wanna turn off photos, delete all of that. We're gonna remove the extensions or the iCloud bookmarks, remove. It gives me an option and I can say remove here if you don't want that extension inside of your Chrome or Edge. And it's gonna take a moment for it to get logged out and then all of that information is no longer gonna be on here. So again, I have no idea what this white window is, but nothing pops up, so I'm just gonna exit out of there. Notice we're back at the main login screen. I'm gonna choose cancel here because I don't wanna sign in. So I'm gonna close out of this. And if we go back to the file explorer, if we go to pictures here, iCloud photos, 
Notice it says it's empty. If we go to shared photos, doesn't even show up. There's no option for the iCloud drive anymore. So it's all gone. If I come back to recently added, all of the apps are still here. But again, if I open one of them up, it says, hey, you're not signed in. So you can't use it. That is iCloud on your Windows computer. So thank you so much for watching. If you wanna help support this channel, hit that thanks button below. If you like this video, hit that like button too. If you learned something in this video, hit that subscribe button, tap that little bell, and we'll see you next time.